Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Apologist Leon Pearly. I'm just hanging out today, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, chilling with my Chihuahua dog. You know, he's been barking up a storm for whatever reason. You know, it's a pandemic. But I just wanted to um, let you guys know something. Be aware of these credit card companies that are sending you stuff like this. You're, you see it? Pre-qualified. Yeah, they, they've been sending me a lot because my credit score is like really, really good right now because all my student loans are wiped out, like $200,000 wiped out. So you can only imagine how good my credit score is. So they're actually like sending me all kinds of crazy stuff talking about, oh, you know, we got the best offer for you and and and, and, and you are best friend and we should have dinner together. No. Credit cards is a modern day form of slavery. And I'm gonna tell you why. Two pe there's two types of explanations for credit cards, two. People that are responsible when they have a credit card, they will tell you it's good to have a credit card, at least one credit card, so it builds your credit score so you can get a house or a car. Well, since I'm partially blind, I will never be able to drive again, so I don't need a good credit score because of that. The more I think about the responsibility of a house, I tell my wife all the time, it would be cool to get a house, but the apartment will fix anything that breaks. So to be honest with you, I have an excellent credit score for no reason. That's the main reason why we have credit scores. Don't ever let anyone lie to you and say, oh, it's for something else. It, there could be other reasons, but let's say those two things is to get a house, the house loan, or a car. Okay, so I was doing the math on the APR. That's the interest, right? The interest. You see that? Make sure the world sees that. That's almost 30%. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, the credit card uh, they send me, right, if I was interested, was $1,000. I have a credit line of $1,000. Well, 10% is $100 because I know that because given to God at church, you know, give your 10% so God can bless you. You know that stuff. So I was thinking $100 is 10%, $200 is 20%, $300 is 30%. They're going to send me a credit card if I was interested that if I miss one payment, they're going to tag $300 more on for the late fees. That's what that means, because I've had a credit card before, so I know what that is. It was never that high, though. Back in the day, it was like, mm, I think I had a 16% at one time, and then I had an 8% like years ago, but that's a long, long time ago. We're in 2020. I'm talking 2004, so you can only imagine, you know what I'm saying? So 16 years later. So I was thinking about how credit cards is a form of slavery, because I gave you the example, if you're a responsible person with the credit card, you pay on time, your credit score goes up, you get the house, you get the car. But for me, I don't care about neither one of those two. So it wouldn't be wise for me to get a credit card. Yes, I could I could get the credit card and buy a, a, a piece of bubble gum for a dollar, right, at the dollar store, and then at the end of the month pay that, and then my credit score goes up, right, and do that once a month. I understand people have taught me that, but I'm not interested in any credit cards because it is a form of slavery. The second side of it, if you're irresponsible, right? Because you have to know yourself. Don't listen to what other people are saying. You have to know yourself. If I get the credit card and I'm unable to pay, I end up in more debt. The slave master is the credit card. I will be the slave. They will whip me until I send that minimum payment. Where's the minimum payment? They call your phone every single day, send you emails, threaten to sue you. Life is crazy. You have a migraine. You need ibuprofen every second of your life. Headaches, just like the slaves on the plantation. Headaches. They're stressed out. They don't know what to do. They have to keep working to pay off the debt. So what we have to understand is that when you outthink what America is pitching to you, you're the smart one. 
People will try to fool you, trick you. Oh, go get it. Don't worry. They don't give a care about you because what happens is if for whatever reason, I decided to get a credit card and I was irresponsible. I already have been given the facts that I will owe them $300 every time I miss a payment. So $1,000 is what the balance is. Now it's $1,300 because it was late. If I'm late for two months, that's $1,600. If I'm late three months, that's $1,900 that they got from me in 90 days, just three months. And they almost basically earn like an additional off of interest of me not making on-time payments or bare minimum payments. The interest has now enslaved me to almost a thousand extra dollars. Now they started off with a thousand. They gave me a thousand, but then because of my irresponsibility, my irresponsible mindset, now I have an additional thousand dollars that is added on and that's how they make their money. That is how the credit card bureaus make their money. And that's also how they destroy your life. So if you don't want headaches, if you don't want a migraine, you need to stay away from the credit cards if you can't handle it. Now, for all this, the intelligent uh, uh, Americans in the world that can handle credit cards, more power to you. I hope you have the highest 700, 800 credit score out there. I, I wish you the best. But I'm talking to the people that the credit card companies know that or that that they know you're not going to read the fine print. Where where is it at? Yeah, twenty six point nine. Yeah, yeah. See, people need to. You, if you're not good with percentages, leave credit cards alone. If you're not, if you if because credit cards, I'm gonna tell you what it does. It's based off impulses. People know if you're out and you're shopping and you don't have the, the cash, you don't have the money on you, you will be compelled to buy that food for $10, $20. But then look at the interest that they're going to get you. <laughs> they're going to get you for the, with that interest, man. And so that, that $20 pizza ends up becoming a $100 pizza. And you're like, man, what in the world? But that's what happens. You have to be extremely disciplined. And the average American is not. We live off impulses. I know for myself, if I go to the mall and I know I have $1,000 on a credit card, I may be tempted to buy some Air Jordans and then suffer the consequences, some, uh, consequences later. But what I'm trying to get people to focus on is stay away from the credit cards if you can't handle it. They are serpents. They are snakes. And I'm sick and tired of them putting people in bondage. Last thing before I go, stop putting yourself in bondage and then praying to Jesus to get you out. You got to make the decision when the credit cards send you this stuff, you need to say, Jesus, what do you want me to do? Because I don't want to get the credit card, go out, blow all of this money on self-gratification and then I'm on my knees when the credit card people are calling me off the chain. Jesus, please, I'm so stressed out. Pay off these bills. What are you talking about? Jesus, did, Jesus didn't tell you to go out and buy all of that stuff at the mall. Jesus didn't tell you to go out and buy all of the stuff at Five Below, Barnes & Noble, all these stores. You're at Starbucks. You're at Kohl's. You're at all Target, Walmart. You're at all these places. And you know the holidays are right around the corner. Right. So Thanksgiving, Christmas, everybody, credit cards. That's why they're sending me stuff now. I'm smart enough to not deal with it. That's my message for today. I hope you learned something. God bless.